Before taking it apart, I wanted to show you my battery configuration. These are two 6S 1050 milliamp pulse batteries. They're about 170 grams a piece or 168 grams a piece. I made this little dongle to um, put them together, a little harness. I had one, I just don't know where I put it. But um, this is definitely not the ideal battery situation. Don't copy this. I really just did this for testing. And um, there's a lot of other things wrong with this quad as well, which I wouldn't recommend, which I'll talk about. Because there is nowhere for me to fly, I have to fly from a construction site. And they are leveling this entire area. I think they're going to turn it into a park, but you can sure as anything believe that it's not going to be a park that we can use for anything. So here we go. Let's first talk about the glaring issue with 7-inch. If you're like me and you live in a city, there's essentially nowhere to fly a 7-inch because you really do want a wide open space to fly this thing. When you get up to 7 inches, your cruising speed is so much higher that it's, it's really hard to fly it well in a tight space the smaller quads just fit in smaller spaces better, you know, size appropriate quads. So if you're in a city, it's really hard to find somewhere to fly. Now the other issue with 7 inch is that a lot of you may have noticed that you have these weird bobbles if there's any wind at all. So in my search to find somewhere to fly this thing for this video, I found the windiest, gustiest place I could possibly find anywhere nearby me and it's this little valley where there doing lots of construction and the wind coming up from the ocean just funnels into this valley and it's just so gusty and windy all the time. And so what you're seeing is you still see some light bobbles in the footage but this is again, this is the worst case scenario and I would actually, at this point, I would blame a lot of that bobble on the prop, not so much the actual motor. However, moving up in motor size has made a drastic difference in this bobble. Now this quad I'm flying has seen num a number of motors, many, many motors, starting from a 2207 to a 2208 to a 2306, all on seven inch. I've tried it on seven and six inch. Uh, then I jumped to the Sunny Sky 2212, the X2212, which is a pretty old motor. That was the 2207 to 2306 motors. They flew fine and they were efficient and they were great, but they also felt like tiny whoops when I was flying the seven inch. Like you would pump the throttle and it wouldn't really do any, it wouldn't do anything at all. It was just not, it's <laughs> not something that anybody would really want to fly. You were just kind of like floating. It was like you're flying a blimp. You just kind of suggest what you wanted to do and it did it. Moving up to the 2212 gave me all of the throttle control back. All of it. It was phenomenal throttle control. However, the bobbles were insane. And back then I was running the Helio stuff and I did try some Betaflight boards and the bobble was way worse. As soon as I threw a Helio board in there, it was significantly better. I mean, I had really good luck with the Helio tech and I really do think there was something there. However, a lot of people object to that, whatever it was. After that, I mean, I, I gave up on solving the bobbles. I tried a little bit, but I just totally gave up. Then I moved to the uh, to a 2408, and then I tried a 20, sorry, 2407, and then I tried a 2408, and those were pretty okay. And then the first motor that I felt that was really good performance, and I could really have good control, good throttle control, good everything, was this, collaboration T-Motor Racer Star 2508. Now this is a collaboration Racer Star T-Motor motor, but I will tell you that this is all T-Motor. There is just about no Racer Star in here. And this is a $20 motor. So for a 2508 with these super thick, super strong magnets and this level of construction, this is an absolute steal. And while I wouldn't say it's perfect for seven inch, I think this is the minimum size that gives you really great control on 7 inch. I think this is a phenomenal 6 inch prop. If you're running 6 inches, this is a fantastic deal and I would highly recommend picking up this motor for a 6 inch prop. But on this motor, I still had some of those bobbles. While I had good control, not the best, my 5 inch still had better just control feeling. The bobbles were drastically reduced when I went from the 2408 to this 2508. So that says something about the width of the motor. Also, this motor has super thick magnets. But literally the day I uploaded that video, Brother Hobby emailed me and said, hey, we have a 2806.5 coming, designed specifically for seven inch motors. Oh, and by the way, it's like 44 grams. And that's 
two grams lighter than the 2508 motor and it's a 2806.5. That's a pretty hefty size motor. Now this is the Brother Hobby Avenger line and it is a, I believe a $31 motor, which the Avenger line does demand a premium. It is their top of the line, everything in their motor. It is a phenomenal motor. I mean, this thing is beefcake. I mean, look at those. It's really hard to kind of explain how nice this motor feels in the hand. Those windings are amazing. The stators are gr the stators are great. The bell design is fantastic. The weight is unreal for this this size of a motor. Uh, the magnets are one area where they have been experimenting with the thinner magnets. On a lot of their more recent motors, they do have thinner magnets, as you can tell from the difference. However, the magnets do have the lip underneath the bell ring, which is fantastic. Um, the magnets are very, very strong, and they don't. The, the thinner magnets don't feel like the. The motor still performs like a 28.0 oh, whatever. Uh, it, in my experience, the stator size matters more than the magnets and the magnet strength and all that stuff. However, that stuff really does play into the equation a lot. I've just found the stator size to be more meaningful than the magnets and all that jazz. However, something you have probably already noticed is that the bearing on this Avenger motor is freaking enormous compared to this 2508. This is an 11 millimeter outer diameter bearing with a three or sorry, a four millimeter internal shaft that's hollow and it's got the screw base. This is just a really nicely made motor. And be, unfortunately, because of that large bearing, the mounting pattern is also 19 by 19. It is not 16 by 19 or 16 by 16, which 16 by 16 is pretty much standard these days. But they did give you a much bigger bearing, which is a lot nicer in the air. Just so much. I mean, you spin this thing in your hand and you're like, oh, yeah, this is so nice and smooth. Yeah, you get the notchiness from the, mo from the strong magnets, but man, does that feel good when you spin it. By comparison, when you spin this, you kind of feel a little bit more rattly on the motor. It's really hard to describe, but just these, this big bearing really does feel nice. Going from an 8mm to a 9mm bearing in 5-inch class on 5-inch motors, now 9mm is pretty much standard, really does feel nicer and the bearing does last a whole lot longer and this is no different. Going from the 9 or 8 millimeter to an 11 millimeter bearing is a pretty drastic increase and it does feel fantastic. However, I have moved to the 16 by 16 standard so I had to drill out my motor base in order to get it to mount and I could only mount these two outer screws because if I had drilled out the, the uh, inner screws as I drilled out one hole I would have just broken my arm end off and it wouldn't work out. This is not the ideal way to mount your motors and I really just did this for testing but as you can tell the inner screws don't even begin to line up with the holes so it's the only way I could have tested this motor on this frame that has seen many 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 quads all in the same setup which is what I do oh, sorry many many motors in the same setup with the same props and same everything which is what I do to keep everything consistent so that I can actually feel differences from motor to motor now like I said this motor is fantastic everything is great about it and as you saw I was flying in the gustiest of situations and the bobble is still there but it's drastically reduced and like I said when I was, when I was watching the video a lot of this bobble I would actually start to blame on the prop this is the gem fan 7x4x3 and it's a totally fine prop I actually haven't tried a whole lot of 7 inch props I do like this one the best the three point the, the seven by three point five by uh, by three is a better prop for smaller motors and just overall in terms of response and the bobble management and control and all that stuff. But this prop just gives you a lot more go and a lot more efficiency in cruising and just overall just it's a better prop overall. However, it does weigh a lot more. It's a lot more aggressive. I would call this a very heavy. 7 inch prop. I would not call this a suitable prop for small motors and I would say that this 2806.5 is really the minimum size motor I think can handle this prop well and that's a really touchy statement I just made because I know a lot of people are going to object and say I run 7 inch, 8 inch, 9 inch on my 2205 and it's great which is just what a lot of motor companies told me as well. They say we have this great 2306 it's wonderful for 7 inch. Look at this person flying it's wonderful. So here's when I get to the actual control performance of this quad and I talk about things that are sort of somewhat unique to me and um, something that maybe not everybody really discusses. So yes, a 2205 will work fine on seven inch and if there's no breeze, no wind, nothing, it will fly great. You can have great long flight times. 
wonderful, but it doesn't give you good control. When you fly a five inch with pretty much anything today, five inch is just so easy to do because there's so much stuff in the five inch catering or and there's just been so much development. It just works so nicely. You have so much control. The quad zips to a stop. It's really smooth. You got just phenomenal accuracy of your sticks and everything is wonderful. When your motor is too small for the prop size, the quad just feels loose and there's no amount of PID tuning that can fix that. And on top of that, I would say the bobble issue, as far as I know, can't be fixed in PID tuning or filter tuning. It just, I've tried so much stuff. It just can't be fixed. This quad has had the same exact settings, the same exact setup across so many different motors. And all I did was change the motor size. Everything else stayed the same and the bobble got better and better and better and better. And the control got better and better and better. The control of this thing, it feels like I'm driving a car in the air. It doesn't feel like I'm flying. The sticks are so solid and locked. When you saw me doing those half rolls and smooth maneuvers, that was just so graceful. Like I felt like the sticks had this weight to them and really responded exactly how I wanted to. It wasn't exaggerated, it wasn't wobbly, it wasn't, it was much easier to fly smoothly because I had this fantastic control. It was just really nice to fly. This thing is a beast to fly. It's so enjoyable to fly with this incredible control. The control is that of a five inch. It feels as in control as any five inch I've ever flown and it feels wonderful. So I would say this 28 size motor is a fantastic size motor for seven inch. However, the $31 price tag is something that you're going to have to manage yourself. Now about the prop, I do hope that there are more seven inch props coming. Um, I don't even know how to improve the prop in any way. I don't know if it's just too flimsy and it's like wobbling in the air and that's why we're getting still these jitters and bobbles. However, note that I was flying in a very windy situation, very windy, very gusty. It was not the ideal situation at all. I did that on purpose to try and make it as bad as possible for the quad and it was performing much better than the other quads. I haven't tried other props on this yet. I do have other frames coming. This frame is the uh, Hyperlite Glide Floss, Glide, whatever it is. It's my Glide Acro frame with seven inch arms. It's the same five inch frame with seven inch arms. And it performs great, but people just don't like props in view. So the new frame that I have coming doesn't have props in view by popular request. And so that's going to be more suitable probably for seven inch. However, I don't, I'm not going to go with six millimeter arms. I'm just going to go with five millimeter because it's, it's rigid enough and you don't need the weight of six millimeters. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to talk about the frame anymore. Uh, the build is your typical five inch build. The ESC I'm using is the, uh, iFlight 70 amp 8S, whatever the highest end iFlight ESC, whatever it is in there. And, uh, yeah, let me think. Is there anything else I can say about this thing? It's just so nice to fly. It's just so exhilarating to fly. All right. Ask me all the questions you like. Let's talk about some dentistry. So another person commented in the, the previous video when I talked about implants and said, what's the difference between an implant and an all on four? So implants are a screw. It's a screw in the bone and we put it in the bone. We give it a couple months to heal. The bone grows into the screw. It's got a frosted surface. And then we put a tooth on top of the screw. Nothing special, pretty straightforward. Dentists make a big deal out of it, but it's really not a big deal. The all on four system is a system, like I said. It is implant based, but the concept is that, so first of all, let's talk about a little bit about engineering. So you have to sort of use the right size screw for the amount of load that the tooth is going to undertake. And that's something that we manage ourselves in, uh, in the procedure and what we decide based on how much bone is available and where we need to place the implant to get the proper uh, mechanical function in the teeth and all that stuff. But the all on four system is a totally different kind of mechanism. What we're doing is that we place four implants in the mouth, spread out kind of like four uh, legs on a chair. And then we take a full arch of teeth. That means cross arch, the whole thing, all your top teeth, molars, anterior teeth, everything, and mill it out of a solid block of zirconia. That's zirconia, it's like fake diamonds, man-made diamonds, super strong, it's the hardest stuff we've got. And then we screw this piece of zirconia onto all the implants. So now you have this substructure of implants with this locked cross arch stabilization of the entire zirconia arch. And it's holding everything together at the same time. And so all the system works together. When you do bite on stuff, when you do chew on things, you get the force spread out across all the implants, across all the bone, and everything is, 
is uh, reinforcing each other. Now, something you may have obviously been able to tell is that if you lose one of them, then you're kind of SOL and you sort of need to rework the whole situation. And these cases are not cheap cases. They're minimum $40,000 cases for a top and bottom set of teeth. They can go up to $120,000 for the whole case. So that's something we need to manage. And a lot of the times dentists will place six, eight, ten implants and do an all on 10 instead of an all on four, just because it's lower risk. A lot of thing, a lot of times nowadays, people will do actually uh, six implants. So they'll do two set, uh, three sets of two, and split up the arch into rear sections and then anterior sections. So that again, if something is lost, if something does happen down the road, it's much easier to manage. It's less liability in terms of cost. It doesn't cost you as much to manage because the lab fee on these things is really high. It's it's a high stakes game playing this kind of doing these kinds of restorations, and it is primarily what my office that I work with, work in deals with. We do a lot of these cases. And so it's a high risk game, high reward game. And a lot of people need this treatment. I'm going to leave it at that. Ask me all the questions you like. I'm kind of getting a little bit, um, maybe over a lot of people's heads with the dentistry now. I did never, I did never, I never intended to talk about this much kind of dentistry, but this is what I do in my daily practice and um, what I like doing. I also do a lot of sedation. So I don't do um, anesthesia, full anesthesia. I do a lot of twilight sedation now. So you can ask me about that as well. I'll start talking about talk. I will start talking about that as well, as well as dental fear and dental anxiety, because you guys seem to have an interest in it, which I really love. Okay, take care. Floss your teeth. Bye.